Welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial. Uh, my name is Babak. Uh, I'm your host in this channel of the world of building design. In the continuation of the Carrier Hub software training, in this training we would like to have a look at the, the system tab in the Carrier Hub software and see what are the processes involved, what are the type of equipment you can select from the drop down menus from the carrier hub system tab um, and uh, you know what are the processes that you need to take into consideration if you need to uh, allow for the ventilation what are the ventilation options available for you and uh, if you need to do different processes such as uh, humidification dehumidification or uh, preheating or pre-cooling these are the options that uh, within the carrier hub you can you can select and apply to the process of the equipment that you select but this is very dependent on the type of system so if you are interested in uh, 3d modeling with uh, revit mep or you would like to learn about uh, a sprinkler system uh, modeling i have other uh, videos that you can go and uh, look at if you like this type of tutorial please press uh, on the like button and don't please forget to subscribe by pressing on the notification button you will see the new tutorial once they are posted thank you very much for watching so in this tutorial we would like to review the system and uh, the features that in the system tab we can select and we will uh, review uh, what are each of these uh, features are about. So if you are in the system tab, uh, you can create a new equipment or a new system that serves uh, one zone or multiple zone. So for this example that I had before, I selected the rooftop unit and I selected the single zone rooftop unit because um, I had one thermostat in the entire uh, zone um, that consisted of multiple uh, rooms and um, I had it as a single zone which is standing for constant air volume so this is a constant flow rooftop unit I just wanted to double click and get into the system tab for this one rooftop unit so as you can see the equipment type is a packaged rooftop unit when it says packaged rooftop unit it means that it has combination of heating and cooling um, and um, it is independent from central heating or cooling system and the air system type is constant air volume single zone so as you can see the number of zone is only one zone so you can define multiple equipment and dedicate different zones to that equipment uh, if you have multiple zone and you wanna be you wanna dedicate different equipment to any of those zones. So once you determine the type of equipment, in this case rooftop unit, then I have to go to other tabs and understand what are the other parameters that we have to uh, complete. So in the system component tab, which is the second tab from the top, um, on the left hand side there are a number of different processes that we have to uh, determine for this rooftop unit obviously we need to determine the outdoor air requirement or how much fresh air we need to bring to that zone or to that space that's defined by the ventilation air as you can see there is an economizer um, economizer option so when we select the economizer option it means that do we want to have this rooftop units to provide the free cooling for the space if the outdoor air allows so if we need to do that then we have to check mark and determine the parameters for the economizer so basically a economizer allows us to provide the free cooling uh, into any space uh, without going into mechanical cooling or at least do partial partial free cooling and uh, there are other options such as uh, ventilation reclaim pre-cooling coil and preheating coil so these are basically the other processes if you have a major air handling unit uh, containing multiple coils preheating coils or pre-cooling coils uh, you can select uh, you know additional 
you know, additional features and apply the processes for that specific application. So right now we are looking at the rooftop unit. It's a package rooftop unit. So I have had all of this unchecked for now. So we have humidification and dehumidification. So for the humidification, sometimes in your air handling units, you do have the uh, steam uh, grid or you have the water that uh, moves into the air stream to provide the humidification. So if you work in an application where you need to maintain the humidity level in the air stream to certain level, uh, we have to look into the humidification process. I, if I check mark, basically you need to maintain the relative humidity set point at a certain percentage. And then you have to determine the humidifier type. So there are, as I said, multiple type of humidifiers. Either is direct steam injection, or you can have uh, electric, natural gas, propane, uh, you know, self-contained um, steam uh, humidifier. There are other options as you can see in here. So these are all depends on which one of these processes you apply. Normally a packaged rooftop unit, uh, there is no humidification and also dehumidification is something that you might want to have. <clears throat> in that case, this is 60 degree or 60% dehumidification level. And for the case of central uh, cooling and heating, because this is a uh, because this is a packaged rooftop unit, um, you need to have this check marked all the time and remove the dehumidification. But central cooling and heating, you need to have it check marked because this unit, which is the rooftop unit, contains the heating and cooling. So if I double click or left click on the central cooling. You have this new uh, you know, uh, menu opens up that you need to fill up. So basically, we need to determine our supply air temperature. This is basically the supply air temperature after the coil, after the cooling coil. So we want the, the temperature after the cooling coil to be 55 degree Fahrenheit with the coil bypass factor of 0.1. So basically, you can determine your supply temperature from this, uh, you know, for this temperature that you put. And then we have to determine the scheduling, the scheduling of uh, the cooling uh, and which months of the year the cooling uh, plant is operating. This is mostly important in the scenario when you, when you want to do the energy analysis, not necessarily the design work. In the energy analysis, you would understand what is the cost of cooling? And uh, these are all based on the month of uh, year. So starting from January to December. So as you can see in this, in this case, we have picked May, June, July, August, and September as the month of where the cooling happens. And then we have the um, capacity control. So in the capacity control, you have uh, one option. It says that the uh, it uh, it stages the capacity. So while the fan is on, you you your fan or your unit works in different stages. Sometimes you have uh, multiple uh, compressor, so two stage control cooling or etc. And then we have this uh, outdoor air for minimum supply temperature and outdoor air for maximum supply temperature numbers all in here. For the central heating, we have the same setup as the cooling, but in this case, you want to provide what is the design temperature downstream of the heating coil. So you have to have this determined, uh, which is used for the calculation of uh, the heating uh, capacity. And obviously other parameters such as heating source, again, scheduling, capacity control, and also the minimum supply air temperature. So the minimum is basically your room temperature. In the case of supply fan, we have to determine 
are fan type, if it is based on ASHRAE compliance, or there are other options, you can select from this drop-down menu. This is basically talking about the type of fan. If it is forward curved fan or uh, forward curved with dampers, so there are multiple options you have to select from. Again, the configuration of the fan is provided. Total static pressure or pressure, uh, total pr static pressure of the fan that uh, you basically provide this information from the, um, from the equipment uh, catalog and uh, you fill it up in this, um, in this section. The dock system is basically talking about the, um, the duct heat gain and leakage, duct leakage. If we know the percentage of the duct leakage, we can provide here and also about the heat gain. If we have this percentages, we put here. And the important part in here is if you have a rooftop unit, either uh, above the plenum would be your uh, return plenum or it's fully ducted um, return air which we need to decide at this point. So if it's a ducted return, you select the first option and you see that all of these other options are blanked off and it goes away because basically if you have a ducted return, it means that uh, you don't have any heat exchange between the return air and the surrounding area. But if you have the return air as a plenum, or above seating as a plenum, it means that uh, the wall heat gain and uh, roof heat gain and lighting heat gain would impact the temperature return or temperature of the return air because the return air goes back from the space into the above ceiling plenum and the other heat gains um, or wall, roof, and lighting would impact the temperature of the return air going back to the units. Basically, it increases that level. So there's a percentage of the heat gain from each of these components of the building has to be put here. And then if you have an um, air handling unit which has a return fan, you check mark and then you determine that the type of return fan, total static pressure, and then overall efficiency of the return fan. This is normally applies to air handling unit, which have two fans. It's a supply fan and return fan. But in our case, because we have only one package rooftop unit, we don't have any return fan. So I'm going to keep it unchecked. So there are other parameters that goes into other tabs, such as zone and sizing which I keep it for the next tutorial. In this tutorial, I wanted to say high level, what are the other processes that you need to fill up regardless of the type of equipment. So if you go back, if we fully close this and we want to introduce another equipment to this system, we can double click with the left, uh, left uh, bar on the cursor or on the mouse. If you double click on the new default system, the new um, system box opens up and then you can define a different type of system. Perhaps you don't want package rooftop unit. In this case, you need should water air handling unit. Once you select that, you have option to have either a single zone or terminal reheat. And basically you have to determine the type of system that is connected to, to your air handling unit or basically your air handling unit, air supply procedure. Is it going to be constant air volume or variable air volume? So you have to determine it from here. And so on, uh, on the other tabs, as we said, if I select VAV in one zone, then I go to the next tab and then I have to fill up the other information as we just discussed. So I will keep it for this for now and I will discuss about the zone component and sizing data in the next tutorial. Thank you.